Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. And again, thank you for watching uh, our update today. Uh, we do our updates at 3 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, you can watch them, of course, on Facebook Live, on the Twitter handle for the city, or at LBTV3 Charter Spectrum. Um, and uh, today we're going to be giving a comprehensive update on the city's response to COVID-19, uh, especially some updates as it relate to testing uh, and hospital readiness. Um, I also want to uh, thank and invite, we have uh, two uh, uh, folks that are joining us today that are critical parts of our city team. Uh, and I want to introduce uh, State Senator Lena Gonzalez, um, who most folks know recently served on the Long Beach City Council and represents us in Sacramento. And also I want to introduce Assemblymember Patrick O'Donnell, uh, who also served on the Long Beach City Council. And the two of them are going to be giving some updates as they relate to the state. Uh, once I give some city Long Beach updates. So I want to thank them both for joining us, and they've been uh, instrumental in being our voice in Sacramento. Um, once again, I want to thank um, Paola, who is doing our translation behind us, and Alice will be doing a summary in Spanish at the end of uh, today's briefing. Uh, so I want to just start by um, announcing the, the, the newest numbers. Uh, we have a total of 285 uh, positive results now in the city of Long Beach. Um, this 285 number, as you've all noticed, continues to increase day to day. That is the expectation in, in the days and weeks ahead as we uh, start getting closer and closer to those critical weeks where we will have uh, a huge impact on our hospitals. And so uh, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to stay home, especially this upcoming week or two. These are the critical weeks. So Please stay home unless you are an essential uh, a business person uh, that have an essential duty. We need folks to stay home. Of the 285 positive cases, I want to, I want to make sure that we that we note that within that group, uh, there are uh, uh, there are individuals also that were part of our long-term care facilities. And so, uh, 47 of that 285 number. Um, are individuals that tested positive uh, in six different <clears throat> long-term care facilities. And I know there's been a lot of concern about those across the city. Uh, we're concerned about those, um, but that, that number is inclusive, that 47 of the 285. I uh, want to note also we are now up to seven uh, fatalities uh, in the city of Long Beach. Um, this is obviously really tragic. Uh, our hearts and our, our, our prayers and our love uh, go out to all the families and friends that are being affected. Um, and I will note again that um, the person that passed also had underlying health conditions. Um, just to give you a little bit of an, of an idea of the folks that have passed away, uh, of the seven, one was in, in their 50s, two in, the, in their 60s, and four were in their 80s. Um, uh, again, all had underlying health conditions, um, and uh, four of those um, have uh, come out of these nursing home or long-term care facilities. And so that is an area that we are concerned uh, about and we continue uh, to watch. There is some good news in those numbers. Uh, I do wanna share that this is an approximate number because it's hard to get a complete count, mm. but we believe about 140 of that 285 have recovered. And so we have 140 individuals that have recovered uh, from COVID-19, um, that's really great news. We're thankful to them for, for pulling through uh, and, uh, and thank their families and their friends for taking care of them, including our doctors and medical staff. And so we hope that that number continues to increase every single day uh, as well. And so that's a little overview of where the numbers uh, stand today. I wanna now go into a little bit of testing and uh, how we're doing with our expanded hospital capacity. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, Long Beach has opened a, uh, a couple new additional medical uh, locations to help people. We have, of course, our five uh, hospital system and our regional hospital partners as well in place. We've mentioned we opened the 100 overflow bed hospital at the convention center that's ready to be activated when needed. And we mentioned that we opened a rapid response clinic at Long Beach City College. Uh, we just opened this clinic on Monday. And I will share with you that we have uh, on Monday and yesterday seen an average of about 50 individuals that have come up to the clinic. Um, that's really good news. And as a reminder, the clinic um, is accepting everyone. It's free. Whether you have insurance or not, you can use the clinic. And I'll also add that it's for all our community. 
uh, whether you have insurance, whether you're undocumented, uh, whether you uh, are struggling uh, at, at home um, and not sure how to pay for medical bills, this clinic is open to all. And it's at the Long Beach City College Pacific Coast campus, right there off of PCH Pacific Coast Highway. And so I encourage you, if you need assistance, to visit the Rapid Assessment Clinic. And it's opened every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So please uh, take advantage of the clinic. In addition, and I want to transition now to testing, uh, we opened up our first drive through testing location adjacent to the clinic at the Long Beach City College Pacific Coast campus. That testing center opened on Tuesday, so just yesterday. Uh, we saw our first uh, 60 um, individuals at the drive through testing center yesterday. Uh, today, we expect we'll see about 100 individuals at this testing center that's, that's a drive up testing center. And that number over time will continue to increase as capacity grows. As a reminder, and this is really important, all drive through testing centers across LA County are by appointment. And you have to use the LA County Unified System to make that appointment. You can access that at the Long Beach website at longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19, or just go to longbeach.gov and the link's right there on the homepage. Once you get to the COVID page on the Long Beach website, once you hit the testing button, it walks you through testing and there's a button where you can push and that'll take you to where you can sign up and get screened for one of these tests because the tests are by appointment only. I wanna remind people, we had some folks yesterday uh, show up without an appointment. You can't just show up and take someone else's time slot. You, and folks, you will get, you will get turned away um, if you just show up to the center. You have to have an appointment to be able to, and this is how it works at every testing location in the county. So please go to longbeach.gov and sign up for a test if you believe you qualify or your physician believes you qualify for a test. Results take approximately 48 hours to get. And again, we saw 60 yesterday, an additional 100 that we'll see hopefully today, and that number will continue. Um, and so uh, again, thanks to our partners at Long Beach City College, the Long Beach Health Department, uh, and that drive up through testing is in addition to our testing center at the health department where we're seeing first responders and other appointment only uh, testing sites. So we are, we are encouraged by that. And I wanna thank folks for that. More broadly, I wanna share, uh, we get asked about how many tests we think we've done in Long Beach. Um, I checked in today with our health department uh, and it's hard to get an exact number because of course these are done through uh, both the public health department and our public and private health partners at the hospitals, private doctors. But we believe we've done um, about 2,000 tests in the city of Long Beach. And that number is gonna exponentially start growing because of the drive-through testing centers that we're opening and other and bringing in more tests. Um, but I just wanted folks to know that we think we've, we've, we've completed about 2,000 tests across the city um, for, uh, for, for COVID-19. And so I wanted to get that number out. So let me now transition to our hospital uh, cap uh, capacity uh, as it relates to how we're tracking beds. Um, we know that in Long Beach, we have uh, our Memorial, our Long Beach Memorial, St. Mary's College Hospital. Uh, we have community that is in the process of receiving their, uh, their approval from the state. Uh, and we have uh, two other hospitals that are partners. Uh, Los Alamitos and Lakewood Regional are part of our, our, our system and partners. We have created a, uh, a dashboard now within the city um, and uh, we'll uh, be sh showing you, walking you more through it on Friday. But just to give you an example, you can see it now uh, come up. We've created a graphic uh, and in, uh, that we're now able to track through our data system um, all the available hospital beds at any given time in our hospitals. It tracks how many shelter beds are open in our shelters across the city. Uh, it tracks issues around how many ventilators we have available in all of our hospitals. Um, and it tracks the, the need that we see in the coming weeks. I've been mentioning to you that um, the real critical point for us is these few weeks ahead as it relates to uh, hospital bed capacity. And um, this data portal we've created uh, is giving us the ability to track that. So we're, we're thankful to everyone that worked on that 
um, and we wanted to share some of it with you and let you know that we are constantly monitoring hospital capacity in the, the city of Long Beach. And I want to um, uh, finally want to just add uh, one other important uh, piece of, of information and that's as it relates to uh, what's ahead in the next few days. Um, we're going to be, uh, in the next few days, uh, putting out, um, it could be as early as tomorrow, and certainly uh, by Friday, we're working on updating our Long Beach health orders. As you know, we have put out our stay-at-home health orders. Um, you've, you've, most folks have been following those. Uh, those that have not, please follow them. Lives are at stake. And so what can you expect um, in the next days? We are going to be putting out some additional guidance and orders as they relate to face coverings and masks. Um, we, I know we're now encouraging folks to wear those when, um, when, when folks are out, but we're gonna be asking and providing some additional rules around uh, face coverings as they relate to folks that are working within our groceries and markets, uh, folks that are working in our restaurants uh, with food and individuals that are part of our essential business force. We're gonna be putting out some additional rules in the next day or so about um, what we're asking folks to do around face coverings. We're gonna do some additional worker protections. We wanna protect not just our grocery workers that are working hard, taking care of us, but also those that are coming into our supermarkets. For the most part, people are complying really well, but we still have folks that are overcrowding or not following the rules and are putting people in danger. And so we're, we're gonna have to put some additional measures in place at our grocery stores and markets to protect the workers and the public. And the same goes for those that are operating um, small businesses, bodega markets, restaurants. We are thankful that you're part of our food supply, um, but we're also gonna be putting out some guidance as to um, how we expect that food to be brought to um, our uh, the, uh, customers and what do we expect of the customers going into these locations as well. You may have heard Mayor Garcetti speak to some of this uh, yesterday evening. Um, and so him and I and the county are all working on um, really aligning our rules. Uh, and so we'll have more on that uh, in, the, in the day ahead. And please note that these orders will begin to be in place and implemented starting this weekend. And so um, more ahead in, in the days ahead on those. And so with that, um, that's the update for, for Wednesday from a city perspective. But I wanna turn this over now uh, to um, uh, the, the two individuals that are, are from our community and that represent us in Sacramento on a variety of issues that are critical to Long Beach getting through this crisis. So I wanna turn this over to our assembly member, uh, Patrick O'Donnell, who is gonna give uh, uh, us an update um, from Sacramento, and then we'll turn it over to State Senator Lena Gonzalez. So thank you, Assembly Member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you for your leadership on this issue. Thank you for the City Council's leadership, and thank you to all the city employees who are out there right now uh, working to address this crisis and keep us safe. And thank you, Senator, for being, uh, our, we, we are the collective voice of, of, Long, of Long Beach up in Sacramento. And I can assure you that California is challenged, but California is leading the way, for sure. Uh, we are an example to other states, and in fact, we are in a position to sometimes help other states. You might have heard, heard of the ventilators, some of which went out, I believe, yesterday to New York, where they needed them, they were in need of them, and can come back if we need them. But I appreciate the governor in reaching out to, to, to New York and helping them, because we're all in this together. Uh, we're not just states, but we're really one nation in, uh, in taking on this challenge. And another example today, the governor announced that California is going to procure 200 million masks we're actually gonna go out, buy them from, from, uh, direct, directly from the manufacturers, uh, bring them into California and distribute them, them to other states if need be. So again, that's California leading the way. Uh, California is well positioned to help other states in many ways as well, so we'll see what, what comes from that in the future. But again, I, this is a state that believes in science, a state that already had a lot of preparations for an event like this, and we knew it could potentially happen. Now it is. So we were, we, we'd started our preparations for something like this many years ago, and uh, we were working hard. And I can't say how proud I am of the state workers, our state leaders, in addressing this crisis, because it is a crisis. We are all in this together again. So just some update on some things going um, coming uh, down from Sacramento. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a teacher, classroom teacher. Uh, but right now, I serve as the education chair from the state assembly. I also have two kids in Long Beach schools, so what's going on in the schools is a big deal to me. 
You've heard the announcements that Long Beach and LA Unified will be out the rest of the year, so that means a lot. Uh, it is not a time to end education. Summer did not start early. There's still work to be done. Uh, starting April 20th, I believe, is the date uh, Long Beach will start a standards-based uh, uh, standards based education from, from distance learning, if you will. Um, and it will, students will be held accountable for that work coming out uh, starting April uh, 20th. Uh, so uh, parents look forward to that. Uh, spring break is next week, so it'll be the week after that. Um, <clears throat> what else? The governor has issued an executive order ensuring that schools will continue to receive funding, but schools do have uh, some responsive, some continued responsibilities as well, Certain, certainly to conduct distance learning, but also to continue to offer meals at schools across the state of California, and that is being done now. Um, the state has released funds for school districts to purchase protective gear, cleaning supplies, or the use of uh, distance learning. Long Beach Unified, in of itself, uh, received $1.2 million. Uh, of those funds and some have come up to me and said hey why don't we just start summer now well there's a lot of complications with doing doing that one of them would be fiscal because the fiscal year ends July 1st another more practical issue is we have a lot of high school seniors uh, uh, that are set to graduate and we can't uh, we can we, we need to make sure they graduate and, and move on to college or their, or their 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 higher education experience and if we were to just cut off the semester right now they would not be able to do that so again really not practical there's been some comment I've heard some comments from folks around town they want to see summer school well that's going to be an expensive venture if we are going to implement summer school this year well there's certainly uh, certainly um, something reasonable something we need to look at but again that is an expensive venture and we're heading into very difficult fiscal times. So we really need to think through where we spend our money. But again, that is absolutely on the table. With regard to higher education, the UC and CSU will accept pass-fail or credit, no credit, for high school courses taking during the winter and spring semesters. Again, this is so kids can move on to their higher education experience. Um, they will not rescind admission offers uh, just because a student is unable to send a transcript by the designated uh, deadline. The UC will not require the SAT or ACT for juniors who will be applying for college uh, this fall. Uh, the College Board will, uh, will offer AP exams, however, they will be online. So students will be taking the AP exams online instead of being proctored in a school setting. Uh, child care, with regard to child care, the governor issued an executive order over the weekend giving child care services to children of essential workers. These are individuals at the front lines, including emergency response folks, health care and law enforcement personnel, and also our gro grocery workers, which I think we would all acknowledge are working hard and putting themselves in harm's way uh, just by going to work in a grocery store. So there will be more detailed guidance from the state with regard to child care shortly. Small business, I've sent out a few emails on the support we are offering in, in concert with the federal government for small business. Uh, financial assistance is available from the federal and state governments to help our small businesses. The U.S. Small Business Administration is offering loans up to $2 million in assistance to cover a temporary loss of revenue. The Paycheck Protection Program will provide and forgive loans for small businesses if all employees are kept on the payroll and the money is used for salaries, rent, mortgage, interest, or utilities. The state is allocating $50 million for loans to small businesses and individuals who do not qualify for the federal funds. Small businesses can delay paying up to $50,000 in sales taxes for 12 months. So if they owe the state a bundle of money in sales taxes, they can delay in handing that off to the state for for approximately 12 months. Uh, with regard to unemployment, a lot of unemployment out there, I'm seeing it, you know, my neighbors, my, my own wife was laid off not too long ago, so this is a real issue, we know this. Um, the federal stimulus package adds 13, or guarantees, I believe it is, 13 weeks of unemployment and adds $600 more per week to the unemployed individual, up to $600 as I understand it. And we, uh, up in Sacramento, we have poured more support into the EDD uh, that's the place where you go to apply for unemployment because the applications for unemployment are absolutely skyrocketing. Uh, you do it on a computer, yes, but there's a lot of work that has to happen in the background to support those individuals who ultimately are going to get those unemployment checks. So again, we have pushed a lot of personnel into that department to support the, those efforts. 
so with that, I'm gonna turn it back to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, any questions, visit my website, call my office. We are here to help you. Okay, you can call anytime, leave a message if it's midnight. We'll get back to you. You can email in. Listen, it is our job to help you. We realize we are in a time of crisis, and we want to help you. With that, back to you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Assembly Member. And uh, again, please, I think uh, what Assembly O'Donnell has said is right. Um, our, our, our state uh, representatives are there to assist the, uh, uh, the public with all those state issues and helping the city get through, navigate through Sacramento and, and the funding. And with that, I want to turn this over to uh, State Senator Lena Gonzalez. Yes, thank you. And I also have to extend my um, sincere gratitude to the city of Long Beach and to uh, Mayor Robert Garcia for their uh, constant communication um, and also for their uh, commitment to ensure that they're working with the state to draw down funds and to ensure that there are resources here for Long Beach residents. Um, I also want to extend a, a lot of gratitude for our first responders, healthcare professionals, grocery workers, educators, translators, as you see behind us, all essential workers to ensure uh, they know that the state is here to support them as well. Um, I will recap uh, a little bit about the state funding that was just enacted um, three weeks ago by the state legislature as we were in session. It was about a $1.1 billion in emergency uh, funding to appropriate to a, uh, a few different areas, which I'm sure you all know about, but just to recap, Funding for local governments to support our homeless uh, residents and vulnerable populations. Funding for childcare facilities that remain open for essential workers. Funding for schools, of course, as Assemblymember O'Donnell had just mentioned, throughout the year. And lastly, and most importantly, funding to expand hospital bed capacity, as well as medical supplies, or PPE, as we've been hearing about it. In Long Beach, I am again so grateful because we have been prepared and we have worked with various partners to ensure we're assessing the regional and state needs and identifying Long Beach resources uh, to ensure that they are receiving state funding and saving lives ultimately. One example is through Community Hospital of Long Beach. Uh, both Assemblymember O'Donnell, Senator Umberg, and myself have been working very closely with the governor's office every week in addition to CDPH, California Department of Health, to ensure that we are working to expedite the licensure and reopening of Community Hospital Long Beach. Thanks to the CEO, Matthew Faulkner, and Pacific Six, John Molina, um, with their support and collaboration, we know that we can get this open in days to come. However, there have been some stalls, and we will certainly talk about that. It is very difficult to open a, a, a hospital, uh, especially during this crisis. As you know, uh, the hospital does have a capacity in totality of 150 medical surgical beds, 11 ICU beds, I'm sorry, 20 uh, total ICU beds and nine ventilators. There will be a first phase of opening very soon that will be dedicated just for COVID-19 transfer patients to ensure that we are taking care and addressing the surge. In addition, the hospital has worked with us to ensure us that they have hired former employees and engaged with our local Long Beach Community College and Cal State Long Beach to engage student nurses. Uh, in addition to the, the needs at Community Hospital, we know that are not just uh, good for uh, the, the city of Long Beach, but they're good for the region, LA County and the state. But we'll also need additional healthcare workers. And as the governor has mentioned before, and we're, we're very grateful that he's put this out, we want to ensure that if you are a retired healthcare professional, um, a healthcare professional that is uh, new in your profession and entering this space, please go to healthcore.ca.gov. We need your help more than ever. Uh, as Assemblymember O'Donnell had mentioned, our, our offices, our state offices, have been inundated with a few things. Um, first and foremost, we've been talking about medical supplies and the much needed PPE. Uh, as he mentioned, we have acquired through state procurement 200 masks via a local California manufacturer, but we still need more. And we encourage all who can donate to do so through covid19supplies.ca.gov. Um, or if you're interested in contracting with the state, what I know my office has received uh, quite a bit are local uh, businesses that want to work with the state to provide uh, supplies that they are manufacturing, just as we've seen here with Virgin Orbit in Long Beach. You can email contributions at caloes.ca.gov. Uh, there are also many efforts locally to ensure that we're acquiring the much needed supplies. 
Small business support has been mentioned as well. We're working with um, Alan Lowenthal's office, our Congress member, through the CARES Act to ensure that state fund, I'm sorry, that federal funding is appropriated very soon to our small businesses. We know that there have been some stalls, but mirrored with that, and as an, a supplemental, the state has created a program through iBank. Um, which can provide loans upwards of $50,000 for small businesses. You can be um, within uh, minority-owned businesses is what we're framing it at. Uh, immigrant businesses, you don't have to uh, be a typical business in order to receive these funds, and you can also receive information at ibank.ca.gov. Lastly, as it pertains to unemployment, I think this is the number one issue we are seeing in California as it pertains to, to state requests for our offices. We've seen over 2 million Californians that have applied for unemployment insurance. In fact, uh, Secretary of Labor Julie Su has mentioned that we have received over the last four weeks more filings than we've seen in all of 2019. It is astounding. Um, our offices are certainly here to help. What I will also say is that, uh, to dig down a little deeper, is that the, the state has enacted and ensured that we're uh, providing remote call centers, we're upgrading our technology, open seven days a week, eight, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. to process all claims, and every state EDD employee is ensuring uh, that they will be processing claims, as well as uh, reorganizing other state uh, departments to ensure that we are on this task. Uh, the extra $600 or 13 weeks, uh, an important uh, thing to note here is that this is automatic. You don't have to reapply for the $600 or 13 weeks that was provided in the CARES Act, which is very good news for all Californians. Overall, I want to say thank you again for all of your work and for the, the leadership and work with my colleague, Assemblymember O'Donnell. As we mentioned, our offices are open and ready to serve you, and we thank you again. Thank you. I want to thank State Senator Gonzalez again. And um, just as a, as, a, as a recap, I think what's happening in Sacramento uh, in the legislature and with the support of the governor is a lot of the programs that we've talked about are we're getting funded through the state. And so when we talk about the four homeless shelters and the shelters that are being opened up, when we talk about uh, the support for our hospitals, uh, the, the daycare programs, um, the city is in partnership with the support of the state as are all of the other cities in, 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 in California, are uh, working to open these facilities up and get support because of the work happening in Sacramento. So I want to thank both of our, uh, of, of our team of legislators in Sacramento representing us in, in Long, uh, Long Beach and, of course, the governor uh, as well. Uh, we do have some questions that we're going to answer from, uh, from the media, and then we'll go on to a summary in Spanish. So thank you. Our first question is for Assemblymember O'Donnell. On March 18th, the two state lawmakers signed a letter urging Governor Newsom to allocate an unspecified share of AB 89 to the city's community hospital operator for use as a COVID-19 patient transfer facility. How much has Governor Newsom allocated for that purpose? Um, at this time, I'm not aware of any money being allocated to community hospital. Uh, my understanding is that community hospital is still in the process of getting open getting certified to open their doors and serve the public. And our assumption would be that it would be then, uh, it would be a recipient of some of those dollars that were allocated back in March. But I'm not sure there's an agreement at this point. And I think it's simply because the doors have not opened yet. But we are hoping, as has the Senator has shared, that the doors will open soon and it will be able to serve a Long Beach uh, short term on the, on the, for the COVID-19 patients, very, you know, on a more longer term basis to uh, serve greater Long Beach and alleviate some of the pressures on the other area hospitals long term. Thank you. The next question is for Senator Gonzalez. Following up on that, um, community hospital officials say a state license is what is holding up the ability for the facility to reopen to accept transfer patients. Can you speak to what the process is and why the license has not been approved? Well, as we've learned um, through this process and in working in deep collaboration with um, the operators and CEO at Community Hospital and with the governor's office and California Department of Health, there are so many elements that need to be done and checked off in order to provide a state license and, and expedite that license. I would still say that it would be expedited in you know the next few days. However, um, as mentioned, the capacity of 158 um, 
medical surgical beds on day one, we would only be able to open, I think, around 25 to 28 beds, just given the fact that we need to focus uh, this specific community hospital and any state funding that would be appropriated to that towards COVID-19 patients and nothing else. And so I would say um, we are working very diligently. I know Assemblymember O'Donnell and Senator Umberg and myself are working every day with the governor's office to ensure uh, of its opening, um, but we just have to get through some check uh, check some boxes um, on the community hospital side in order to make that happen. Thank you. The next question is for Mayor Garcia. Uh, on an April 14th city council agenda item proposes to have Long Beach taxpayers spend $250,000 to repair community hospital elevators so the operator can use the building as a COVID-19 patient transfer facility with no commitment by the operator to reimburse Long Beach taxpayers for that cost. Does Mayor Garcia think that's fair? And if so, do the state lawmakers commit to urging Governor Newsom to use AB 89 sums to cover that cost? Uh, so I think I'm not overly aware of the item. I think this is uh, Council Member uh, Daryl Supernaw has uh, put forward an item to uh, set aside uh, some infrastructure dollars that uh, are part of his district of where community hospital sits uh, to pay for some infrastructure, uh, elevator repair to the hospital. Um, I'm, I think that's uh, what the question's about. Um, and so do I support it? Absolutely. Uh, we are in a, a health crisis. We need to get the hospital open. We need to make sure the infrastructure is repaired. And so I, su I support um, the city and, and, and the council members' efforts in that area. Um, and as far as uh, reimbursement is concerned, I think the assembly members said it correctly. We're going to try to get as much as possible and everything reimbursed. I'm not sure if they want to speak to the second part of that question. And Mr. Mayor, I just think, it, to be clear, the city owns Community Hospital. Okay, It is a property of the city of Long Beach. Thus, the city of Long Beach is the landlord for any po potential hospital that reopens there. So, you know, typically it would be fall on the landlord to repair things inside a building that need to be repaired before the business can open. And I'm sure that's what this money seeks to do, is to repair something that needs to be repaired so you can lease the building out. Yep. And that's right. Mayor Garcia, an additional question for you. When will patients begin going to the hospital beds in the Long Beach arena? So that's really dependent on the capacity of the hospitals. I, I showed the um, earlier today, uh, the dashboard we're creating. And so what we'll be able to see is when there's a hospital uh, capacity that becomes an issue at one of the hospitals and we need overflow, that's when the arena will uh, come into play. Um, and really, this is really something that we're, we're not waiting around to set this up, it's set up now. And so that really will be used as an overflow if we feel capacity is reaching a point that our hospitals need to move patients to another location. Uh, Mayor Garcia, next question. Is Long Beach considering making it mandatory for people, for all people to wear face coverings in public? Well, I think first, I think like I've said before, everything is on the table. So we're considering everything. We're, con we're considering uh, everything to, for, for public safety. Um, and I think like we've mentioned, we're gonna have some additional guidance on face coverings, especially as they relate to essential workers and, um, and those of us that are going into these locations uh, in the next day or so. And so we should expect some additional uh, uh, restrictions and some additional requirements. We already are encouraging folks to wear face masks, face masks uh, facial coverings really, and we know that the surgical masks should be reserved for medical personnel, doctors and nurses, but face coverings that people can um, uh, can make at home or can buy uh, uh, through uh, online marketplaces. Uh, and I have mentioned that um, the Long Beach Post has set up a marketplace on their website, uh, shop, I believe it's shop. Um, uh, Long Beach Post uh, or, or LBPost.com, shop.lbpost.com. You can, uh, people can sell their, uh, uh, their, their face masks and the, the post is not receiving any sort of commission on that, just person to person. Um, uh, that's a great way of doing it, but we'll have more guidance on this in the days ahead. Mayor Garcia, will Long Beach release coronavirus infection data broken down by race and or income level? Uh, I, I definitely know we're gonna be releasing it based on, based on uh, race and ethnicity. So that's a question I've been asking um, we are uh, getting some of the data together. There are some, there are some health uh, uh, restrictions that we're trying to make sure that we've, we've kind of met as it relates to people's information. Um, but uh, staff is working on this and we hope to have a kind of comprehensive review of uh, uh, and that being a data point that we report moving forward. And so we are um, adjusting how we report information 
by ensuring that we're getting out uh, more than just uh, age um, and, um, uh, and, 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 uh, and sex and, and, and those questions. Uh, we want to go beyond that and also include race and ethnicity. We think that's important. So that should, people should be uh, looking, looking to that in the next days. And our final question that came from our online platform um, is for Senator Gonzalez. Um, for as far as unemployment claims, uh, once people file their claim, when will people see their unemployment checks? That's a great question. Um, we are, I believe at this time, it takes about uh, 13 days. I'm sorry, I have uh, information right here, specifically 13 weeks. No. Uh, I don't want to jump in on your question. Go ahead, assembly I've been told. Uh, I've been told about three weeks. I'm sorry, three weeks. And they're trying to shorten that timeline. We've added personnel to the effort. Uh, but again, my understanding is it's typically three weeks right now. We're trying, yes, we are trying to shorten that time um, because we're adding hundreds of new uh, EDD employees, if you will. Um, we're hoping to shorten that to two weeks, if not a week and a half. But it's really been, as you know, our state employees are very much inundated. But the nice thing, as I mentioned before, is that any of the federal changes through the CARES Act, the $600, the additional 13 weeks, you don't have to reapply for, which is good. Thank you very much. That concludes all the questions. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, for the questions. We're going to turn this over now to uh, Alice from the Health Department, uh, and she's going to give us a summary of the comments today uh, in Spanish. Thank you. Gracias. Hola, muy buenas tardes y gracias por estar con nosotros hoy. Este esta tarde también nos acompaña la senadora Lena Lina González y el asambleísta Patrick O'Donnell. Um, ellos también han sido muy el, el apoyo de Long Beach y son los que nos represent, representan a nosotros en el estado, en Sacramento de, y en el estado de California. A, a partir de esta mañana, nuestro Departamento de Salud y Servicios Humanos de la ciudad de Long Beach informó que hay 285 pruebas positivas con 140 casos recuperados. El número de fallecidos en Long Beach ha aumentado a 7 y, y nuestras condolencias y uh, pensamientos están con esas familias. Este, nuestro, nuestra prioridad aquí en la ciudad de Long Beach es uh, subir el número, aumentar las pruebas disponibles para la, en la ciudad de Long Beach. Esta semana, como hemos hablado previamente, lanzamos la clínica de evaluación rápida sin costo. No se necesita tener cita y priorizamos a, los que, um, a las personas que no están experimentando síntomas del coronavirus. Ayer también lanzamos la clínica de autoservicio o drive-thru, como se dice en inglés, para las pruebas de COVID-19. Aunque las dos clínicas se encuentran en el estacionamiento del colegio de Long Beach, estas tienen unos requisitos uh, poco diferentes. Las pruebas en la clínica de autoservicio son solamente con cita previa. Priorizamos a las personas sintomáticas, a las que tienen problemas de salud subsayentes, y a las personas de 65 años o más. Las pruebas... Um, Esperamos que la evaluar aproximadamente como 100 pruebas al día para responder a las preguntas de evaluación previas y programar una cita. Puede visitar a longbeach.gov COVID-19. Si los espacios para las citas en la ciudad de Long Beach y la opción no aparece, es porque uh, por lo tanto están llenas todos los espacios por el, por el día y puede tratar nuevamente al próximo día. Uh, los resultados de estas pruebas tardan aproximadamente 48 horas en procesarse y nuestro Departamento de Salud estará en comunicación con ustedes, nomás tengan los resultados del laboratorio. En Long Beach aproximadamente han visto una pregunta de cuántos exámenes hemos hecho en la ciudad y aproximadamente han sido como 2,000, pero claro, nuestra meta es hacer muchos más exámenes que, que eso. Este... Ay, ay. También este, tenemos otras medidas y para prepararnos a una afluencia de personas que necesitan atención médica en relacionado con el COVID-19. Estamos uh, poniendo carpas móviles para hospitales, abriendo una clínica de evaluación, como hemos hablado. Este, también uh, se han establecido hospitales afuera de las salas de emergencia del Centro Médico de Long Beach Memorial, de St. Mary's y de los otros hospitales para evaluar a la gente y personas que, que presentan síntomas leves o moderados del COVID-19. Este, el asambleísta Patrick O'Donnell tiene unos datos sobre la educación en la ciudad de Long Beach. 
Este, no es que el verano ha empezado temprano para los estudiantes, pero después de las vacaciones de primavera, el, uh, eh, desde el 20 de abril, el distrito escolar empezará um, las escuelas de larga distancia con, con, con los estudiantes en la ciudad de Long Beach. Uh, no es práctico cancelar las clases o terminar el año escolar temprano. Por ejemplo, porque los estudiantes de la preparatoria que se tienen que graduar del 12 grado necesitan todos sus requisitos para empezar la universidad después del verano. También el sistema de la universidad ha hecho unos cambios para los estudiantes que empezarán en, el, en este siguiente otoño también. Uh, hay una... Uno, Uh, para el cuidado de niños también. Este es una orden ejecutiva del gobernador que brinda a los trabajadores esenciales acceso al cuidado de sus hijos. Por ejemplo, los um, empleados del gobierno, los empleados que están trabajando en las tiendas. Hay muchos um, detalles sobre eso también que van a salir en poco tiempo. Uh, recursos para pequeñas empresas también. Hay muchos datos para ayudar y préstamos también para las empresas pequeñas para que puedan sobresalir, pagarle a sus empleados y cosas así. Este, los beneficios de desempleo. Um, ahorita, claro, hay muchas personas que están este, aplicando para los beneficios de desempleo o so están recurriendo a, a este, más trabajadores para en vez de que tome tres semanas para recibir su primer cheque, tal vez um, con... Uh, aún cuando entrenen a los nuevos empleados, podamos ver como entre unas dos semanas o una semana y media para ver el retorno de su cheque de desempleo. Pero obviamente eso toma un poco de tiempo. Este, también uh, para las veces que tienen que reaplicar para las 13 semanas o para los 600 dólares adicionales, por, por al tanto, ahorita no se tienen que reaplicar por eso. Eso automáticamente va a ser un beneficio para todos los que apliquen y uh, tengan los beneficios de desempleo. Um, I think that's okay. yeah. Gracias. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Y, uh, gracias por, por mirar. And I want to thank everyone again for joining us. And again, thank you to State Senator uh, Lena Gonzalez and Assembly Member Patrick O'Donnell for joining us. Uh, and we'll see uh, everyone again for the next update um, on Friday at 3 o'clock. And we can continue to put out information. So please stay safe and, and stay home. Thank you. <laughs>